Sanna, it's great to be back in Helsinki. It's great to be back in this building and meet with the, the leaders of the social democratic parties and the uh, trade unions of the Nordic uh, countries. This is actually a forum I used to participate in myself for many, many years. But now I'm here uh, as uh, Secretary General of NATO, and of course we meet at a critical time for our uh, security. Um, President Putin's war uh, in Ukraine against Ukraine uh, grinds on, and there are no signs that he's changing his plans. Uh, he wants to control uh, Ukraine, and uh, he is not planning for peace, he's planning for more uh, war. And therefore it is uh, extremely important that uh, we provide support to Ukraine, and I commend uh, uh, the strong support that Finland has um, provided to Ukraine. This makes a difference on the battlefield every uh, day. Then uh, I also meet later on today Prime Minister, the uh, President uh, uh, Saudi Ninesto and, uh, and, uh, and Foreign Minister Pekka Havisto. And uh, uh, in all my meetings today, I expect that the issue of uh, Finnish and the Swedish uh, membership will be an important uh, topic. Uh, and as you all know, uh, all NATO allies made an historic decision to invite both Finland and Sweden to become members of the alliance. Um, uh, we are making progress. Uh, last uh, a couple of weeks ago, I met with um, President Erdogan, and uh, we agreed uh, to have a meeting with Finland, Sweden, Turkey in Brussels next week. Um, my message is that uh, both Finland and Sweden uh, have delivered uh, on what they promised in the trilateral agreement they made with uh, Turkey uh, last June in Madrid. So the time uh, is now to ratify and to fully welcome both Finland and Sweden as members. Thank you. To Mr. Stoltenberg, you said that we are making progress with Finland and Sweden. Uh, when do you expect that we can finally be members? And what is NATO and the Allies doing concretely in order to make this happen before the this is a top priority for NATO and for me personally. So uh, we work hard uh, and uh, uh, we have to remember that so far this is the quickest accession process in NATO's modern history. Finland and Sweden applied in May, uh, then all in June all NATO allies uh, agreed to invite Finland and Sweden and then uh, all 30 allies, also Turkey, uh, agreed on the accession protocols and signed the accession protocols. And so far 28 out of 30 allies have already ratified in the national parliaments. Uh, the Hungarian parliament has uh, made it clear that they will uh, start uh, uh, the discussions um, within a few days, uh, so I hope that they will ratify soon. Uh, when it comes to uh, Turkey, uh, they have expressed some uh, concerns, mainly about uh, uh, Sweden. Uh, my message is that uh, both, Finland and Sweden, uh, both Finland and Sweden have actually have lived up to what they uh, agreed to in the trilateral uh, agreement. Uh, let me add one more thing, and that is that Finland and Sweden are in a much better place now than before they applied. Uh, because as invitees, Finland and Sweden sit at the NATO table, are integrated into NATO's civilian and military structures. Uh, several NATO allies have also provided uh, uh, bilateral security assurances. So it's inconceivable that there will be any threat against Finland or Sweden without NATO uh, reacting. So uh, I cannot give you an exact date, but we are working uh, to uh, make it happen as soon as possible. Should NATO as an organization take an even more determined role in pushing uh, Turkey's and Hungary's ratification rather than Finland, Sweden, Turkey? Uh, well, so first of all, decisions in, in NATO are made by consensus, uh, and we have made the decisions we need to make as NATO already. Uh, we made them uh, back in June when all 30 allies made the decision to invite Turkey and, uh, and, uh, and uh, sorry, invite Finland and Sweden as uh, full members. Uh, and we made the decision, uh, decision as, uh, at 30 when we agreed the accession protocols. What remains now are decisions that have to be taken as individual allies. And that is the ratification in the national parliaments. That's not a decision uh, 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 that we can take together. It has to be taken in each and every capital. Uh, and so far, 28 have ratified, two have uh, not. Uh, but it is a priority for me. Uh, and we are working hard. Uh, and we are using the, uh, the, the argument that, of course, it will be good for Finland and Sweden. But it will also be good for uh, NATO, for all of us, to have Finland and Sweden as members as soon as possible.
Lauri Nurmi, Iltalehti, Finland, uh, Western <coughs> Law Secretary General Stoltenberg. You are saying that Mr. Putin wants more war, not peace. So my question is, should NATO or specific NATO countries uh, provide security guarantees to Ukraine, otherwise Russia will occupy Ukraine sooner or later? And uh, Prime Minister Marin, uh, please give also your comments on this issue. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, first, also what NATO allies uh, and also partners as uh, Finland and, uh, and Sweden do, and also the European Union and many others, uh, is that we are providing unprecedented level of military support to, uh, to Ukraine. Uh, uh, we are not party to the conflict, uh, but uh, we need to remember what this is. This is a war of aggression uh, launched by President Putin against uh, Ukraine. Uh, they have the right to defend themselves. That is right which is enshrined in the UN Charter. And we have the right to help uh, support uh, Ukraine in upholding the right of self-defense. Uh, then, of course, NATO also has another task, and that is to prevent escalation, uh, prevent this from becoming a full-fledged war between, between uh, uh, Russia and, uh, and NATO. And therefore, we have also increased our military presence uh, in the eastern part of the alliance, uh, also in the Baltic region, uh, to send a clear message that an attack on a NATO ally will trigger a response from the whole uh, alliance. The important thing now is to support Ukraine, and uh, then no one can tell exactly when this war ends. But when it ends, we need to ensure that uh, history doesn't repeat itself, that uh, President Putin cannot continue uh, to uh, attack the neighbors. Uh, and therefore, we need to strengthen the military capabilities of Ukraine, but also look for frameworks that can ensure that uh, 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 President Putin, Russia, doesn't invade uh, Ukraine yet another time. So security guarantees after the war, like Wall Street Journal wrote? As so about NATO allies have agreed that uh, Ukraine will become a, a member of uh, our alliance, uh, uh, but at the same time, that ha that is a long-term perspective. What is the what is the issue now is to uh, ensure that Ukraine prevail as a sovereign independent, independent nation, and that therefore we need to support uh, Ukraine. I see that the future of Ukraine is to be part of European Union and also <coughs> member uh, of NATO. Um, we have taken many steps forward when it comes to military aid uh, to Ukraine and I'm very glad that we are now cooperating together much more closely to, um, to give Ukraine more heavy weapons. Uh, I think the discussion now, even though it has taken some time, it's been very important uh, concerning, for example, the Leopards. Uh, so countries are cooperating together uh, more closely uh, and more widely. And this is a very good thing. We have to support Ukraine as long as it takes. And they also need more heavy weapons. Uh, and the faster and the sooner we can give them more heavy weapons, the sooner the war will end. Uh, and this is something that we also need that uh, cooperation between the democratic countries. Finland has taken many decisions on armed support to Ukraine, and we are willing to continue this as long as it takes. Stein, also you want the Norwegian newspaper Dark Data. Prime Minister Marin, could you describe just why it's so important for Finland to become a full-fledged NATO member as soon as possible? And if you don't mind, what role Secretary General Stoltenberg has played in, in your membership uh, pursuits? The reason why we have applied uh, NATO membership it's very simple. Uh, NATO line is the only line that Russia wouldn't cross. Uh, and this was the question that we had to ask ourselves when Russia uh, invaded, attacked brutally Ukraine. I'm also very glad that we have been able to work so closely with Sweden during the process. And of course, we see that, that both Finland and Sweden not only uh, will uh, make, have made this decision for our own interest, but it's also the NATO's interest that we will become members together simultaneously. We are sharing the same security environment. We are up here in the north and we will also strengthen the whole defense uh, of the northern part of Europe. We have many capabilities and when you ask Finnish people, their willingness, and this is one example, their willingness to defend their own country, it's very high. I think it ranks uh, number one or almost number one uh, worldwide. We also have quite uh, wide military forces in Finland because we have always invested in this, we know we have aggressive neighbor that we are now seeing also in Europe. Uh, and also Sweden have its own strength uh, to give to NATO uh, 
for example, the military industry that they have is a, is a big uh, asset uh, for also the whole alliance. And I think it's in NATO's interest to have both countries within the alliance as soon as possible. And I'm very glad and happy of those who support that Jens personally have given during this process. Uh, and of course, uh, the situation where all countries haven't ratified yet, uh, it also, I think, uh, gives um, uh, a burden uh, to NATO because we are fulfilling all the criteria. There shouldn't be any problems when it comes to our uh, membership. Uh, and I'm hoping that this ratification will end as soon as possible. And also Turkey and, and Hungary will ratify very soon before Wilma. Thank you, Ida Halikainen, Ilta Sanomat. A question for Mr. Stoltenberg. Uh, if Finland and Sweden are the NATO NATO members in Vilna's summit, how credible NATO's open door policy actually is? And if, if you allow me another question for both of you, are you disappointed in something in Finland's and Sweden's NATO process? So first of all, I'm absolutely confident that both Finland and Sweden will become a members of NATO. Uh, again, all allies, also Turkey, uh, were part of the decision uh, to invite Finland and Sweden to become members, and all allies, uh, also Turkey, have signed the accession uh, protocols. Um, and uh, Finland and Sweden meet the criteria. They have delivered what they are supposed to, to do. And therefore, my message has been for a long time, but also in Ankara, that the time has come uh, to, uh, to finalize the ratification process. The time is now to, uh, to, to ratify both in, uh, in, in Budapest and in, uh, in Ankara. Uh, then, of course, it is, uh, by the end, uh, the end of the day, a Turkish decision when to ratify. Um, we will continue to have close dialogue with, uh, with, uh, uh, with, with Turkey, because it is important to finalize this as soon as possible. The last question I forgot. Yeah, are you disappointed in something in this process? First of all, I would like to commend uh, uh, Finland for their courage, for the political leadership, for the ability to take decisions uh, at the critical time for our security. Um, and it demonstrates us that NATO's door is open uh, because actually all allies have invited Finland and, uh, and Sweden and they will become members. Um, and this will be good for NATO, it will be good for the Nordic, for the Baltic region. Uh, uh, I visited Tallinn uh, just a few days ago, and of course they understand uh, the, the, the geography, the importance of having Finland and Sweden as uh, full uh, members. And then it will also be good for, for Finland and Sweden. Well, of course I hope, <coughs> would have hoped to, be, uh, to become members of NATO already. Uh, Finland and Sweden fulfill all the criteria, as has been mentioned. Uh, and we are yet waiting. And of course this strains uh, the open door policy of NATO uh, as well. Uh, it's to do with NATO's credibility because we fill all the criteria. But as Jens, Jens mentioned, uh, this is in the hands of Turkey and Hungary. Uh, and we are waiting for their process to finish, hopefully, sooner than later, hopefully before Vilna's meeting uh, in, in summer. But we don't know. Uh, it's in their hands. Last question. Johan Palmas from uh, TV2 in Norway. Uh, it's a question for both of you. Hungary has signaled yet again a delay in its ratification process. Are you in dialogue with the Hungarians about this issue? And is it clear to you what the Hungarians need in order to ratify? I haven't heard any news of some specific needs for Hungary. They have said uh, all along that they will ratify that they don't have any problem uh, with Finland or Sweden's NATO membership. They have their own process, their own timetable, and we are waiting uh, there to finish their process. Uh, I have, of course, talked with uh, Prime Minister Orban many times during European Council meetings, also the last time that we met, uh, and he, he said that, that they have this timetable, that they will ratify, and they haven't uh, once uh, said that there would be some conditions uh, of our uh, membership applications. On the contrary, they have said very straight that they will ratify, but it will take some time. Also, I have nothing to add. Uh, we have heard exactly the same uh, messages from, uh, from Budapest that they will ratify in the near uh, future. Um, uh, but again, we speak about sovereign uh, 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 national parliaments, and of course they uh, finally uh, decide themselves uh, when uh, to make these decisions. But my message uh, is the same as uh, from 
from, uh, from Zanna is that the time has come. Uh, Finland meets all the criteria as do, uh, do Sweden. Um, so we are working hard and, 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 and the aim is to have this in place as soon as possible. Uh, Pamela, just a last point. Are you satisfied with the state of democracy and rule of law in Hungary? Uh, well, I'm very happy that we were able to negotiate uh, the rule of law mechanism when it comes to MFF. Uh, I think this has already shown strengths. It's in every European citizen's interest to make sure that rule of law is respected in every country, in Finland uh, and in every member state. So I'm very happy that we were able, actually, when Finland uh, held the presidency of European Council, we were able to connect uh, these two elements, rule of law and uh, MFF, how we use the EU budget. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.